Hello everybody and welcome to Music Corner Storytime. My name is Dina Kussman. I'm a pianist and a piano teacher. Today I am so excited to share a book with you and it's called Bartolomeo Cristofori and the Invention of the Piano, The Music of Life by Elizabeth Rush. Together we will learn about Cristofori's journey in making the piano. We will also learn the different sounds he wanted to create. Throughout the book, I want you to keep an eye on the big words written on the top of the page. You will notice they're not in English, they're in Italian. These words, such as piano and forte, stand for the different volumes at which you can play. Try and remember as many as you can. There will be a quiz at the end. Don't worry, it's not graded, it's just for fun. So let's get comfortable, turn on our listening ears as we go on a journey of the creation of the piano. Enjoy! In Padua, Italy, Bartolomeo Cristofori's home since his birth, a hush envelops the room as the instrument maker carefully adjusts the tuning pins of a clavichord. Feet pat across the room, cloth rustles, sand falls silently through an hourglass. Cristofori treasures the quiet so he can coax just the right notes from the delicate instrument. He strikes a key firmly and inside the clavichord, a small metal strip presses a string. A pitch-perfect pianissimo note trembles out. In the garden, starlings chatter, nearly overpowering the soft sound. Outside, a parade of pounding hooves and clattering wooden wheels grows closer and closer, louder and louder. Horses whinny, snort, and stamp as the young prince and his entourage spring from the carriages of the cobblestones. His Highness Prince Ferdinando de Medici. Word of Cristofori's gift for tuning and restoring keyboard instruments has spread throughout the land. The prince, an accomplished musician, has come to examine Cristofori's work for himself. Cristofori shows the prince to a harpsichord, a keyboard instrument that plucks stiff strings. Ferdinando sits and begins to play. Forte notes, strong and loud, ring out. Prince Ferdinando yearns for his court to become the musical center of Italy. He urges Cristofori, come to Florence, join my court. Cristofori is torn, reluctant to leave the peace of Padua. But the prince makes an offer Cristofori cannot refuse. A house complete with all the furnishings he could need, generous pay, 12 scudi a month, and an important position, master instrument maker and tuner. Best of all, Cristofori would be able to work with the most elegant keyboards in Italy and have the chance to build some beautiful new ones of his own. So Cristofori sets off for Florence. When Cristofori arrives, he installs his work table in the long row of the famous Medici workshops along the most talented stone engravers, goldsmiths, lathe workers, tapestry weavers, and potters of the region. How different from his workshop at home! Wool beaters thump and looms clatter clack. Ka chunk goes the printing press. The cabinet makers saw and bang endlessly. Cristofori can't hear himself think. Even worse, he can barely hear the instruments he is trying to tune. So Cristofori moves his workshop out of the hubbub and into his house. He planes boards and saws keys as a fire crackles in the hearth. He glues joints as tin plates clink in the kitchen. He tunes strings as a nearby fountain splashes joyfully. Bells toll and clang and chime, ringing in the dawns, the days, the weeks, and the years as Cristofori restores 16 of the prince's keyboard instruments and builds from scratch nine more. The prince and the people of Florence find Cristofori's work to be masterful. But for Cristofori, his creations aren't good enough. The harpsichords and clavichords he restores and bills can only do so much. For no matter how gently a musician presses the keys, when the harpsichord plucks its strings, the sound is loud, always loud. And no matter how vigorously a musician presses the keys of the clavichord, when its tiny metal strips tap the strings, the sound is soft, so very soft. Neither instrument can start sotto voce like the whispered gossip of neighbors and build to an angry argument, 
No one can play a pounding march, then drop down to a lovely lullaby. There's no way to surprise listeners with a few feathery or furious notes. As Cristofori ponders this problem, he delivers harpsichords to the Medici's Pitti Palace for concerts in the gardens. There, he marvels at great stone statues, how sculptors he once worked beside have brought marble to life. Cristofori lugs harpsichords to the prince's favorite villa outside the city for concerts in the theater. There, he admires the prince's room of small paintings by great masters, how artists have evoked a moment in time with just color and lines. Cristofori accompanies harpsichords to Pratolino, the prince's summer residence, for magnificent operas. There, Cristofori hears violins, violas, and voices rising from a hushed whisper to a bellowing bravado, capturing all a person can feel. How much can be expressed with stones and paint, and bows on strings? If only Cristofori's keyboard instruments could fully express the music of life. The instrument maker yearns to create a new keyboard, one that can be played as softly as a gentle rain and as loudly as a booming thunderstorm. But how? Cristofori wanders the streets and workshops of Florence. All around him hammers rise and fall. Tink, tink! Go the tiny hammers of the goldsmiths and silversmiths. Tap, tap, the sculptor's mallet strikes. Bang, bang, the blacksmith's sledgehammer pounds. Even in the piazzas, hammers dance above dulcimers, filling the air with a rich range of sounds. Maybe hammers are the solution! But what should the hammers be made of? Wood? Paper? Leather? Cristofori scours the bustling markets of Florence for a variety of materials. With the clink of gold florins, he pays the shopkeeper. Back at his workshop, Cristofori wonders, what would be the best design for the hammers? He experiments, carving wood carefully. The hammers begin to take shape, wide at the base, narrow in the middle. The hammers will strike stretch strings, he decides. But what kind of strings? Brass, steel, gut, or gold? The strings should be strong enough to endure pounding, but still vibrate richly. For a warm, clear tone, he chooses brass and stretches the strings tightly across a cypress soundboard. Now the instrument maker faces the toughest challenge of all. How can musicians change the volume simply by varying the pressure on the keys? Cristofori experiments with different ways for the keys to control how fast and how forcefully the hammers swing. At first, the hammers strike too hard, breaking the strings. Then they tap too softly to be heard. They sometimes even rebound, striking the note twice. Finally, Cristofori crafts a clever solution. Now pressing a key flings a hammer at the string. Immediately, the hammer falls back and is caught, poised to play again. The inventor assembles a long row of keys, hammers, and strings in a sturdy wording case. Cristofori gazes at his masterpiece, which is covered in red leather, lined with green taffeta, and trimmed with gold ribbon. On the outside, it looks just like a harpsichord, but inside is the marvelous new mechanism. What will his patron think of it? Finalmente, in 1700, Bartolomeo Cristofori unveils his new invention. Prince Ferdinando sits before the instrument. He taps a key slowly and gently, and the sound is soft and sweet. He presses the keys harder and faster, and the notes ring out loud and clear. The prince plays a peaceful lullaby, a joyful jingle, a rollicking round. It is possible to play both piano and forte, a court musician marvels. The prince calls him a virtuoso. Cristofori bows, full of pride. Cristofori's wonderful invention is eventually named for what it can do. It is called the pianoforte. Cristofori is pleased, but he is not done. For years, he tinkers endlessly with his pianoforte, making the mechanism smoother and even more responsive. But the keyboard is so sensitive, musicians struggle to play it. Hit a key a little too hard, dong, or too soft, ding, and the volume follows. The more responsive Cristofori makes his instrument, the more reluctant musicians are to play it. Undaunted, Cristofori spends the rest of his long life perfecting his invention, coaxing it to respond precisely to a musician's touch. He hopes that someday, someone will use it to capture the music of life. A few royal courts buy Cristofori's amazing pianoforte, 
But still, the harpsichord reigns as the most popular keyboard in the land, and before he is able to see his instrument embraced widely by musicians, Bartolomeo Cristofori dies in 1732 at the age of 76. But Bartolomeo Cristofori's invention lives on. An article about his amazing instrument is published in Germany, and an organ maker there begins crafting pianofortes. The instrument slowly spreads across Europe. Musician Joseph Haydn tries a pianoforte for the first time. Its responsiveness lights his imagination on fire. In a concert in 1777, the young virtuoso Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart dazzles an audience with the instrument's expressive possibilities. From that moment on, Mozart and countless others compose all their keyboard music for the pianoforte. Cristofori's invention, eventually called simply the piano, becomes a powerful tool in the hands of brilliant composers everywhere. Ludwig van Beethoven's piano rings out, rousing and full of joy. Johannes Brahms's piano soothes to sleep. Scott Joplin's piano dances. Clara Schumann's piano sings. Claude Debussy's piano makes moonlight. And today, all around the world, in the hands of countless musicians, young and old, Bartolomeo Cristofori's piano captures the music of life. Whew, what a journey! Cristofori did so much. Now, let's see if you caught the Italian words that I wanted you to look for. Forte means loud. Mezzo forte means moderately loud. Crescendo means becoming louder. Molto crescendo means becoming much louder. Fortissimo means very loud. Decrescendo poco a poco means softening little by little. Mezzo piano means moderately soft. Piano means soft. Pianissimo means very soft. Morendo means dying away. Dal niente means out of silence. I'm sure you remembered all of them. If not, feel free to listen to the story again. Thank you so much for listening to Cristofori's story with me. I had so much fun. See you later.